Hello everyone, this is Dimitri from Not Just Games, and welcome back to not a devlog this time, but a short opinion piece about Unity's recent price policy changes. And recently they announced a, let's say, revision on the terms, so there's still gonna be a runtime fee, but it's gonna be comparatively much, much better than what it was before. And here I just want to say, um, I just want to give you this metaphor, getting hit by a car is much much better if you compare it to getting hit by a bus. And this is how I feel about this change. Yes, it is better, but there are still some, some points which just are hurting me. And I'm not sure if I can trust Unity to just not do a 180 reversal again in the future. Let's go a little bit into the letter to see exactly what has changed before and now. So this is an open letter that Unity has published for our community. And it starts off, um, the person who wrote this uh, introduces themselves, and it starts off with, uh, I am sorry. And I totally understand, and this is a good thing that they realize that it was a mistake. The way they announced the previous runtime fee it was just um yeah we have spoken with more of you and we should have incorporated more of your feedback before announcing our new runtime fee policy and my question there is have you talked to anybody outside before so outside of unity before because we should have spoken with more of you sounds like you you had some discussions at least I don't think that if Unity would have spoken with five indie developers that nobody would have come up with the issues and nobody would have pointed them to a better direction initially. I, I, I don't believe that because even if you ask ChatGPT or their own internal AI, they would reply with all of the same issues that the community found and yeah, it honestly, I, I don't understand how the initial runtime policy just, just got out. I, I don't understand that. Mistakes happen. Okay, it's a big, a big organization. I can understand that. But well, shouldn't it be actually that there is a big organization behind it? So somebody should have noticed what kind of backlash this would get or they could have predicted that. I don't know. This is my opinion, maybe I'm a little bit naive here, but yeah. Also, the one thing that they deleted the GitHub repo tracking their terms of service, that is um, that is a thing that also suggests otherwise. But okay, let's go a little bit further. You are what makes Unity great, and that's true. The Unity developers, I counted myself also as one, they're, they're amazing. Um, you, you learn so much, there's so many tutorials for everything, and I, I just learned so much from, from the people that have, yeah, that have showed us stuff in Unity, it's just... That's also a little bit sad that I am slowly shifting away from the platform. The tool is great, I have to admit that, and I really like developing C Sharp. I realized how great of a language C Sharp is, just because of developing in Unity even though Unity does not support the latest C-sharp features. Still, I, yeah, the tool itself is cool. But anyways, uh, let's keep going here. And work hard to earn your trust. We have heard your concerns and we are making changes to the policy we announced to address them. And that's good. Um, yeah, let's keep going. Our Unity Personal plan will remain free and there will be no runtime fee for games built in Unity Personal. This makes it less complicated for the indie developers and I think that's a very good point. As a, as a person just starting out you don't want to care about things that might be coming in the future. Like the way they did that before it was just something additional to think of and it, it's good that they remove it for the personality. I think that makes sense. We will be increasing the cap from $100,000 to $200,000 which is also nice because you have more time to prepare. And we will remove the requirement to use the Made with Unity splash screen, which is something that has been controversial for a long time. And I think there's so many 
reasons already. A lot of people have talked about this. I, we can skip this. This is a good move. I I really endorse this. This is good. No game with less than 1 million in, re in uh, trailing 12 month revenue will be subject to the fee. And that's also good. Uh, yes, having this kind of cap is, is great. I like that. The runtime fee policy will only apply beginning with the next LTS version of Unity shipping in 2024 and beyond. So this, this could have been there from the beginning. This should have been there from the beginning. It's, you cannot apply a fee retroactively. You cannot say, oh, you used this tool 10 years ago and from now on I want you to pay me. The, like if the con if that wasn't part of the contract, it's it's not I don't know. This would have already prevented a lot of the outcry that everyone had. I think this is like a very big topic. You just yeah, this this is the thing that destroyed the trust, I think. Okay, maybe one of the things, because there were multiple ones. But this is one of the things that destroyed the trust, I think, the most. And it's nice to see it that they have revised it so that it was a mistake and just made it better. Now you, if you keep using an older version of Unity, that's it. But I think this still has the potential for issues because what happens if you need to upgrade at some point because of either security concerns um, or the platform requires it. Because for example, when you deploy on Android that I have experience with, you need to upgrade from time to time the target SDK level, whatever it's called in, uh, in the Android thing because of security concerns. And the App Store enforces that. Basically, they will not allow you to push any updates if you don't upgrade or yes, if you don't go to the next target release version of Android or whatever. And this could be a way that they could force you in the future to upgrade to a newer version of Unity. They could say that, okay, support until this settings and no further. And then if you want to publish on a specific platform, then you would have to upgrade and then you would again run into the fee system. But yeah, I think in this kind of case, it cannot be avoided. Okay, this, this is fine. Okay, let's go. Um, your games that are currently shipped and projects you're currently working on will be not included, will not be included. And yeah, that's what we said. It's it's good. You don't have to worry about things you shipped a year ago or things you're currently developing. This is great. Unless you choose to upgrade them to a newer version of Unity or you need to because the platform requires you to have some kind of features, which then would be available only if you have the upgraded Unity version. So I see a potential for a problem here, but we can say that this is better than before and it's fair. Let's say that. We will make sure that you can stay on the terms applicable for the version of Unity Editor you're using as long as you keep using that version. And here ties this one thing in where they deleted the GitHub repository tracking those changes. This thing is for me kind of a deal breaker. I don't think I, I can trust Unity to, to keep what they promise here. Because this has happened in the past again. 2019 and there was some retroactive kind of shenanigans going on with a uh, spatial s i think it was called um yeah it was a very very crazy thing back then and that's why they had to implement this github repository tracking the terms of service in the first place and they removed it with the new runtime fee and now they said okay fine we are reinstating it and i don't see any guarantee that in the next controversial change they're going to be planning that it, they, they're just going to not remove that. Like, I don't know. It's it's difficult to say anything, right? It's they state now that they're not going to do that. But the same way they state that, I can also be skeptical if they're going to keep it because we have evidence that they have done it two times in the past. So yeah, this is kind of like a stalemate situation. And this is basically yeah the trust issue that's okay. Uh, we'll see. Okay. For the games that are subject to the runtime fee, we are giving you a choice either at 2.5% revenue share, which is a calculated cost you can have in the future, or 
calculated, uh, calculated amount based on number of new people engaging with your game each month. Both of these numbers are self-reported. Thank you for no uh, crazy algorithm that tracks data in the background and is working with the principle of trust me more. I know what I'm doing. Uh, there's not going to be any pirated versions counting in there and anything else. We will manage to track everything 100% perfectly, most likely, which was the, the past version of this, like, uh, yeah. So both of these numbers are going to be self-reported and this is great. From data you already have available, I guess this is going to be working with uh, um, how many people have installed it or bought the game through Steam or in the applicable app stores. There's also a key figure there which you can then find out what your initial engagements are. Um, you will always be built the lesser amount. And this is good because this uh, again adds to this calculation you are doing as a business. Is there a risk? that I'm going to pay more than what I have earned. And with this revenue share cap, this is this is good. I think this this is giving a little bit of a safety for people that are feeling a little bit too mm, the potential you know, risk here that this could just escalate to a crazy number that you would have to pay. Yeah, so we want to continue to build the best engine for creators and I really do hope so. Unity is a great engine and it should get better. That, that's the best thing because the better the engines get, all of the engines should get better. Then we have more competition, better competition, and every game developer profits from that. I think this is a goal that every game engine should have. We truly love this industry and you are the reason why. That's good to hear. And yeah, thank you for caring as deeply as you do and thank you for giving us hard feedback. This is a fair letter, let's say. It's, it has everything that I wanted to have in the, first, in the first iteration of this kind of runtime fee. But, I mean, sometimes it's better late than never, right? Could, they could have decided to take the hit uh, in their reputation because that had gotten with them anyway. But they decided to actually amend some of these changes, make them better, and that's a, a first good step to rebuilding the trust. But for me, I don't think this is enough. I, I might be different and I might be a little bit more stricter here, but I don't think one letter is enough to rebuild the trust. We will have to see how Unity is gonna act upon this, this thing here in the future. We will have to see if the prices are gonna change at all because this letter here never says for example that there's never gonna be a price in the future for unity personal there's this is never stated this could be a potential thing they could do in the future or they could increase the the fee for the people who are already are having to pay the fee they could also potentially lower the thresholds in the future you don't know that and this kind of uncertainty would not normally be there if you have a business partner that really talks the, these potential changes through with, with their community. I mean, I really don't believe that they could have not prevent that by talking with more of the, of the people, of the users, of the developers. So yeah, I, I, I don't, uh, I'm not ready yet to move over. So it's understandable if Unity tries to somehow make more money to reinvest in the engine and I would like to see that that new investment money that they're going to be getting for it to be really used to improve the engine. Like for example finalizing the, the UI toolkit which has been in development for so long and still is really not officially approved for production. And uh, I mean, it's usable in the editor for building like tools and stuff, but I would have really liked to use that as my main UI framework. And yeah, it's, it's been so long in development. I hope now that they will have some additional income that they can invest in the things that make the, the engine great and so that all of the Unity developers will actually profit from this change after all. And I hope that uh, that the uh, prices will stay stable, that people will be able to afford 
and make some great games and that it will have success and this is going to be just good for the whole industry itself if, if we have good engines with good monetization policies yeah um i think i i might have said too much now you, you know you know the gist um by the way next week we are gonna have something like a schedule so we our goal will be to publish three videos per uh week two of them are gonna be shorter shorter videos like probably either comparing stuff from unity and godot one by one like whole systems like the animation or maybe what well, like cinema scene which is lacking in godot at least i think so um this kind of stuff um and then we're gonna have one devlogs, uh, which is gonna be, you know, the classic devlog porting over our Unity game to Godot. And yeah, if you like this kind of content, then please subscribe. That would be very nice and it would help us stay motivated. But of course, I, I really like doing this devlog style videos, so I will keep them anyway, whether you subscribe or not. But um, if you do, that would be nice. So, see you later in the next video. Bye.